In this module, we will review the basic radiography of the shoulder, uh, including four projections. This is the standard frontal or AP projection, in which case we see the uh, standard three main bones of the shoulder girdle, the scapula, the humerus with humeral head, and the distal clavicle. If we zoom in, we can see that the humeral head in this instance looks somewhat like a light bulb. That indicates it's in internal rotation. This sclerotic line here represents the greater tuberosity of the humerus, which we'll see better on the Grache view next. The AC joint here between the distal clavicle and the acromial process of the uh, scapula is nicely seen on an AP view, and the undersurface of the distal clavicle and the acromion should align. The humeral head articulates with the glenoid socket, shown here, and the coracoid process projects out from the scapular neck out towards the humeral head. The Grache view has the patient oblique such that one can see down the glenohumeral joint. This gives a better appreciation of the actual joint thickness or the cartilage space within the joint, the smoothness of the humeral head and the glenoid in a normal patient. And in addition, this shows the external rotation view of the humerus, where the articular surface is here, the greater tuberosity projects out like this, and down here, the lesser tuberosity is here, thereby delimiting the bicipital groove between those two. The AC joint itself is not as well seen on a Grache view, but you can see the distal clavicle here lining up with the acromion. Back to the coracoid process, remember that comes off the scapula, it projects out, and in this case projects slightly over the humeral head. The Y view is one way of getting a perpendicular view to the glenohumeral joint to ensure that the glenohumeral joint is normally located. Normally, the scapula should form a Y as delimited here, and in a perfect Y view, the scapula will be a very thin bone. The glenoid should be at the intersection of the limbs of the Y, and is a little bit hard to see in this example, but should be right in here. And basically, the humeral head should be centered up over that in this view, and in fact should be centered up over the glenoid in almost every view. Another reason sometimes people get a Y-type view, or an inlet or striker notch view, is to look at the acromial outlet, not well seen in this view, where the supraspinatus will exit. Sometimes one sees soft tissue opacities adjacent to the shoulder girdle, especially on digital films. That's just the normal muscles seen to good advantage with digital technique. The axillary view is a key view if the patient can be positioned appropriately to look for glenohumeral anatomy and the anatomy of the glenoid itself. Here the patient is supine with the arm abducted and we're shooting up through the axilla to expose the image. Humeral head is seen here with the shaft here. The glenoid is here and the scapular body. The scapular spine comes up around here to form the acromion and one sees the distal clavicle coming over to form the AC joint, sometimes well seen. Good idea to look at the alignment of the acromion and the distal clavicle in this projection as well. The normal glenoid should have a smooth contour and the humeral head itself, especially the articular surface component of it, should be basically centered within the glenoid to ensure normal glenohumeral anatomy. That's a quick tour of normal alignment on shoulder radiography. Thanks for your attention.